Hello, good afternoon. I'm schwitzing and I'm hungry. I'm actually not that hungry, I'm thirsty. Um, I'm sure some of you know by now that today is the 17th of Tammuz. The 17th of Tammuz begins a period in Judaism known as the three weeks of mourning. And from today, the 17th of Tammuz, all the way through Tisha B'Av, the 9th of Av, we go into a period of mourning beginning today by fasting, where we don't eat from sunrise, which was about 3 o'clock, until 9 p.m., and culminating with Tisha B'Av when we fast again and we lament the destruction of the Holy Temple. Now, the reason for this is because nearly 2,000 years ago, today was the day when the enemies of the Jewish people, the Romans, broke the siege of Jerusalem and began the destruction of Jerusalem, culminating on Tisha B'Av, on the 9th of Av, when the holy Beit HaMikdash was destroyed and the temple was burning on fire. And to commemorate this, we have days of introspection. We don't have weddings during these three weeks. During the nine days, we don't even eat meat. We don't go on extended vacations, etc. And we focus more on what we could do to bring the spirituality and holiness of the Beit HaMikdash back. And that is our focus. And it's remarkable because summer has begun. And you look around you and you see everyone is busy on a Sunday knowing which beach they're going to go to, especially in such hot weather. Are they on the Cape or are they in Vermont? Are they in Maine? Wherever they may be, which ice cream store they like. And here we are, 2,000 years after the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. And today in the morning at 8.30 in Shul, we had a minion. And what did we do? We were fasting and we were praying. And we were saying the Slichot, which is the supplications we say, asking God for forgiveness and for rehabilitation. And the question is, come on, it's been 2,000 years. I mean, got to get over it, right? When someone has a loss, you always tell them, you mourn a week, a month. We have the Shiva period. We have the Shloshim period. We have the Yartzeit period. But at a certain point, you have to move on with life. Yet here we are, 2,000 years later, and we still mourn the destruction of the Holy Temple. And the reason is a remarkable one and shows the resilience of the Jewish people. We know back when Joseph in Genesis was taken away from his father, Jacob was mourning. Joseph was his beloved son, the first son of Rachel, and he was devastated. And his sons tried to comfort him, say, Dad, you have other children. You know, life has to move on. Yet the Torah tells us by Yimotin Lihisnachim that Jacob refused to be comforted. And the rabbis explain us that comfort is one of the gifts that God gave us when someone passes away. The fact that you're able to lose, heaven forbid, a parent, a child, a sibling, and be able to move on with life is a gift that God has given us to be able to continue. But that only happens when the person passed away. But since Jacob had this feeling that Joseph was still alive, he couldn't be comforted because that comfort that God gives when someone passes away to allow you to move on hadn't been activated by Jacob because Joseph was still alive. And therefore by Yemo'in Lihis Nachem, he refused to be comforted. And the same thing the rabbi says with the destruction of the temple. Yeah, the temple was destroyed 2,000 years ago, but that was only the physical temple, the spirituality, the holiness, and the yearning for it to be rebuilt, and the knowing that God promises to rebuild it even physically, gives the Jewish people our strength and allows us to never give up and to continue being comforted and to continue doing the things that will allow for redemption, that will allow for a messianic era, loving, unity, Torah, mitzvot, etc. I was thinking about this today because it's been so painful to be reading the news the last few days. And our hearts and our minds are all with the Jews and all types of people 
South Americans, Argentinians, all types of people that are in the rubble in Surfside, Florida. And I think about the families and the uncertainty, the hope that maybe someone's still alive, the hope that maybe they will find their, per their loved one still alive or that they might be suffering under the rubble. And it doesn't even allow them to mourn such a tragic and untimely passing. And today in the morning, showed up in Surfside, Florida, Hatzalah members and IDF from Israel who are going to help with the search rescue. And there, one of them was being interviewed on TV and he was an Israeli IDF. He had, he was displaying his uniform proudly and his badge, his Magen David and his kippah. And they asked him, is there any hope? And he told them, he said, you know, years ago I went to the Haiti disaster when it was the earthquake. And he remembers digging someone out after so many days. And the person was alive. And he said, he mentioned the person's name, etc., etc. And he said, it's on the desk. Wow. And he says, there's always hope. So they say, are you sure there's hope? He says, there's always hope. And now... I need to go to work. And he proudly goes off. That's the story of the Jewish people. He flew in from Israel to help the rubble, one of the greatest tragedies we've seen, always with hope, always looking forward, always recognizing the possibility that there is never a time to give up. They say the story about this guy who lived in Israel back in the 60s, he moved there and he was trying to get a phone line, and it was very hard, the bureaucracy, you know, Israel's Israel at the end of the day. And finally, he gets, on a, he gets to an appointment and he says to the guy, tell me, yesh tikva, is there hope that I'm going to get phone service? And the guy looks at him, and if you know Hebrew, you'll understand it even better. He says, yesh tikva, aval ein sikui, there's hope, but there's no chance. By Jews, we never give up on the hope. We wait for God's salvation every day. And Imamin, we have faith. And even today, 1900 plus years after the destruction of the temple, we continue to mourn its destruction and we refuse to be comforted because we know that an era of redemption will come. Have a great day and an easy fast.